Oh, do you edit? No. <laughs> I don't edit. Hey guys, uh, well, do you want to come here? Oh, yeah, I'll take an intro. Oh, okay. So I'm here with Daniel, and we have some very valuable, or Vintage MTG on YouTube. We have some very valuable magic uh, artwork, and I, you know, I'm so impressed by just uh, what he has. Uh, this Time Walk, Underground Sea, Mock Sapphire, this island that I believe, um, what's his name, Open Booster, in an unlimited pack, opened one of these as his rare recently. Oh, right. Yeah, oh. this is the island that he... Well, it might have been a different island. Well, there are island rares. Yeah, yeah, there are. There are, are island island Simon, Simon, come here, come here. Yeah, come here. Simon, Simon too. He's also Simon. from Houston. Um, and... I speak loud, guys. Cause yeah, because the... Uh, and, yeah. Do you want to go over some of this? Yeah, yeah, like, so, uh, yeah. So, you I, so guys, as you guys know, uh, my channel is Vintage uh, MTG. Uh, I, uh, Tony's been gracious enough to spend some time hanging out. Uh, I'm here to deliver this. <laughs> This is actually the main reason. The um, BGS 10. Oh, no, no, not BGS. Oh, PSA. PSA, PSA 10, yeah. So anyway, what we'll do is zoom in, guys. It's a PSA 10 uh, Christopher Rush autographed uh, Alpha Black Lotus. Wow. With a 10 auto grade. So it's a 10 car grade and a 10 auto grade, which is very different. Also, a uh, 10, by the way, in PSA is considered uh, gem mint. It's yeah. not, it, so it's not pristine like Beckett. They, uh, BGS, they have pristine, which is actually technically a higher level grade, but that's the quad ten. Is that the no, no, but that's uh, <laughs> the quad ten is black label. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, so basically, in Beckett, they so so BGS nine point five is equivalent to PSA ten. But there's actually it's funny because there's actually PSA tens that also deserve the pristine grade too. Okay, so Beckett just has another higher grade. Uh, but anyway, these are just some original artworks. You're probably wondering why the hell am I here? Well, uh, I just wanted to sell this all to, to Tony. I uh, wish. Tony, how much will you give me these for me? Uh, I mean, well, what do you think? At least your card shop? What do you think? Yeah, my card shop. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. <laughs> no, 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 yeah, yeah. Only if you take the debt. Well, you know, yeah, you got to take the debt. Yeah. You know what would be funny is how long, how long have we left this stuff in your card shop before, oh, someone, man. before we figure this out they want a jacket? How long will that take? Probably like uh, maybe two days. Two days, yeah. But like it's because of knowledge, because they probably like where my car shop is located. There's no way they think these are real. So even uh, if I had in my car shop, yeah. I don't think anyone would think they're the original, you know, pieces, right? Right. Because it just doesn't come across like right. a normal car shop. Uh, uh, by the way, Sammy, you said something about your favorite pieces of all time. What were they again? Time Walk? Time Walk, uh, Dan Dan, and Misdirection are my three favorite magic pieces. So very excited to see Time Walk uh, in person. Come over here a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, so so, so, so the, the, uh, Dan Dan actually was stolen. stolen. Yep. Yeah. So the story goes, Dan Dan was Arabian Nights, stopped the, the filming, and you guys can uh, look at Dan Dan. It's one of the coolest pieces because the fish, the Dan Dan fish, pops out of the water these two pontoons, and it's it's absolutely gorgeous. It's actually, in the test of time of artwork, it'll probably be considered a nun type of magic piece in a way, because Drew Tucker, the artist, one of my good friends, his style of art transcends any type of, like it's so different. It's very unique. And that's, and, and guys, we're gonna pan through here in a minute, but the magic original art, uh, back in Alpha especially, uh, the original 25 artists were given free reign, effectively, to do whatever they wanted. So you'll notice a mixture of comic book, comic booky style art, like this Keldon Warlord piece by Kev Brockschmidt, or you also have more of the uh, kind of airbrush, uh, kind of a simplistic style, like the pirate ship. Pirate ship. It's not. And this is Alpha. <laughs> Alpha. Okay. Uh, by the way, uh, it's not the dark. Tony, Tony said it was the dark. There is no pirate ship in the dark. There's a pirate ship. It's called a skeleton ship. Skeleton ship. Yeah, yeah, and that's by Tom Morris. Yeah, that is high. Okay. So you know, he actually has a ship guy. Yeah, it's yeah, the same it was, guy. It's the same guy. You got the ship. I got, got the skeleton. I can, I, can, I can figure yeah. it out from the. And okay. then uh, 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 the scorched ruins is not. Uh, uh, you know, this is more of a weather light piece by John Avon. And then there's some Power Nine in the Underground Sea and the Mock Sapphire, which will pan here. But what really what's interesting is that Jesper Mirforce, the original art director, the story goes um, that um, Richard Garfield was uh, the kind of the creator of magic. He said, wait a second, we have to make sure that when people play the game, uh, it's 
they can see what the card's doing. Like, this is the card. Yeah. So cards like Counterspell, you can see that this guy is just saying, hey, you know, screw you, you know. No, buy, no. go away, go away. So that was the purpose of why everything was so big. Like, the island is this one island. <laughs> yeah, go look at your islands now, you'll see some fancy nickel bullet horns and fancy, you know what I mean? There's things, yeah. that, it's, it's ridiculous. A lot of lightning bolts. Yeah, lightning, yeah. There's a lot that's like more than one lightning bolt. It's hard to tell what it is. So, you know, that's the purpose of it now, you know, the, the, the art back in the day was like that. So this idea was with the older art. And the art, you guys, uh, this is actually like five by seven. Let me pan through here. Uh, I'll do it for you. Yeah, yeah, I don't actually know how to pan. Yeah, so the art uh, was five by seven because of the scanner? Right, the scanner back in the day, guys, was um, uh, very expensive, they said. So uh, scanners back in the day were 1993 like, scanning technology. Yeah, it was literally uh, the price of, I mean, like a, a real scanner, like a normal scanner, Tony, was probably like a few thousand dollars. Wow. A really nice, like, like the quiet price of a plasma TV back in the day. Yeah, like, yeah. like I have one of those old Samsung plasma TVs. Uh, they're like five grand for the 42 inchers. Thick, it like, weighs like 250 pounds or whatever. And I just refuse to sell it because of the fact that it's vintage. Go ahead, Tony, <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. cameras. Yeah, vintage cameras. No, I like this card a lot. So like, what would something like this cost, Daniel? Like, Well, value-wise, we're talking here, this is- Like a know, counter spell, yeah. No, 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 this is, this is like, so this card sold for 435,000. Like, the, I've already been offered over a million for this. A million for the underground yes. seat. This wow. already, this already wow. sold, this already sold, and I can't tell you the price, but let's okay. just assume- Wait, it's, it's more than underground it, it's, it's Well, I mean, let's assume it's all in the same category. Yeah. Basically, this piece right here, there'll be videos about this. We bought a deal uh, from a collector, Josh Patel, which we'll have more videos about um, in a story where basically um, we bought two Power 9 pieces. We paid over a half million for each. Yeah. The deal was $1.5 million for the entire deal. And that deal uh, will be on my <laughs> YouTube channel. So, so, yeah, so, so you guys will see the yeah. deal, but then you, so, you'll see uh, Tony's video. But basically the thing is, wow. I resold. Oh I, I resold this, and you guys can figure. And that's a private sale. Yeah. But um, yes, I mean this is the most beautiful of the moxes, I think. Um, oh yeah. If I wanted a mox, it wouldn't be this one. The the, the, the sh sapphire, yeah. So what's interesting about magic art is that it's also become like real estate. It's property. Absolutely. So with a time walk, I was saying is that uh, there's a total of three investors. Myself. Uh, famous old school magic oh, player Brian okay. Weissman. He okay. bought a third of it, and another client. Oh, also, I didn't know. That. So another, yeah, another, an investment. An, another investment. Yeah, another investor bought this. Uh, the other third. So we all own a third. So it's almost equivalent to remember that car, the Honus Wagner, the T two hundred six. Where uh, one million dollar. Uh, well, it was it, it, it was it was Wayne Gretzky and the owner of the L A Kings, Bruce McNall, or yeah, something. They went into it. Uh, yeah, they bought a PSA eight. T206 Honus Wagner, it's the same effect as rather than having like one person owns this card, um, then three people own this card. And so other pieces here, you know, I might have a stake in it, you know, or I own outright, right? And I'm not going to reveal that through privacy, yeah, but the reality is, and, and people always ask, why, why do the people, why do people do that? You know, why do people, um, you know, have ownership percentages? Rather than uh, yeah. let's fix it, yeah. I'll let you know. Okay. Still, yeah, I'll let you know. Yeah. yeah, people always ask why do you do ownership percentages rather than buying it outright? Well, it's just it's, it's leverage of cash flow. Um, <laughs> it's just like you know, like let's talk about like a card shop. A card shop needs to have cash flow to, cash buy, flow a to buy new sets or yeah. whatever. I have to still buy collections and stuff. Artwork is very stagnant, it just stays around, uh, it looks beautiful. But unfortunately, you know, like when you finally do sell it, sure, it sells for. A, I mean, you're asked about valuation. This right here is the cost. It's like of valuing a business. business. I mean, you, your title can say uh, Magic the Gathering artwork and cards worth more than a Bugatti. You know, yeah, it, 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 it is yeah. literally yeah. more than a Bugatti. But an underground C can be worth more than a Moxer right by. It. Yes, what exactly. It has, has nothing. God is so specific yeah. to it, what people yeah. like. It has it's nothing. Not just the card. Yeah, it has nothing to do with with necessarily what the card does. It's like Time Walk one day, test of time, could be a $10 million uh, painting or maybe a hundred million to someone who loves it. Yeah. And so to people that like Time Walk, like Simon does, the piece is so different than any other piece here, right? Very different. So 
you have a, a, a situation where there's like a personal uh, affinity. It's iconic as a piece of art, uh, but also as a magic card. So, time so out of these, is, you would pick Time Walk. I would put, pick Time Walk. I would every absolutely time. pick Underground Sea because uh, now that I've seen it in person, like it looks, yeah, it looks a lot better in person. Than I don't Why is Underground Sea your favorite? Um, well, I played a lot of it. Yeah. So that's the blue black. Obviously, that's the most expensive of them, and I just like it. It's, you know, the colors, it reminds me of uh, landscaping, like a Bob Ross painting almost. Yeah. But, magic card. And plus, I know that if I own this, it's more impressive to say you own it on the ground C, because everyone is playing it in Legacy. And they're going to play it for the next 20 years. The fact that, like, I own something right. that is better than, I, I don't want to say better, but something that I see all over the place in EDA stacks and every single format. Time Walk. I know it's power nine, I know it's nice, but people don't have time walks. Right. So many more people have that, that's a very fair um, assessment of what you're saying. So, you know, there's, uh, for those of you out there who own like uh, foil pimp cards or you have your signed cards, you might have special cards altered. The reason why you own those is that there's a personal affection, affinity, and it makes you feel like, hey, you know, you can show your, off your friends, not for like evil reasons, but <laughs> for the reasons of, hey, you know, it's nice to know that everybody else on uh, the broader scope plays this, with yeah, it. This is the so, origin of legacy. Right. right. <laughs> Without but, this card. But, but, but the thing is, some people actually just say, hey, you know, for me, like Underground Sea reminds me of a beautiful place I'd like to be. Yeah. I like to be somewhere, you know, away from the world and, you know, this vast cavern and they have this beautiful you know, water. Is, I can see yeah, that, right? So, so beautiful. So it makes, you, it makes you realize that, hey, look, you know, I don't want to be, you know, stuck in, you know, the nine to five, right? I want to be in this cavern. Oh, yeah. Whereas Simon, why do you like artistically the, the time block? Why do you explain to people? Sure. So my favorite art style is surrealist art is my favorite art style. So I think this is very evocative of that art style. So that's that's one of the reasons. And just the colors and depth. Again, so again with the underground sea, you see. I think most people have seen mostly revised underground seas, and yeah. they're kind of washed out. Uh, the time walk, even you know, I, I own uh, some black bordered um, power, and I have black bordered time walk. But just the depth and just the coloring. It's just a really a beautiful piece of art, and I think it stands up as a piece of art, not just as a piece of magic art. Right, right. Um, you know, this could be so. There's, uh, you know, Salvador Dali or Rene Magritte. If you if you put this up on on a gallery wall next to them, it does have a feel and a lure to it, just like those other you know famous artists. Um, so yeah, just my my absolute favorite piece of art, and stunning in real life. Hey, so Tony, it doesn't matter. Like like Simon's right. It doesn't matter if you love it because of the art, like Simon, or you love it because of the gameplay value, yeah, yeah. or in my case, I love the underground sea because of getting away on a vacation or somewhere, right? It, it really doesn't matter. Art has this a connection for so many walks of life. And my hope, honestly, like people ask me the question, um, you know, people often ask me the question, where do I want to go with all this? Um, how, how are we going to... You know, like, how, how does that work? How does your business work? No, right? well, well, let's we'll talk about the business thing later, but in terms of the art side, how, how do I, how would you, um, what is the ultimate goal, right? People have asked the question, how does it work? And I think ultimately with the art, I, I think I want to, something we yeah. have uh, The reason, the, the business side of it and ideas, I, I actually owned the Underground Sea originally, and then I sold it. Okay, and then I bought it back. Yep, that's so, common so, so, magic. So, yeah. so the problem, the thing is though, you know, I, 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 I bought it for, you know, like, so I, I sold it for like, uh, like low five figures. I then bought it for low six figures, <laughs> okay? And then you have this situation where it's like, uh, you now it's worth, you know, you know, seven figures, you know? You know so it's kind of like a situation, like what do you do? Is it because of money? And I realized that I want to do eventually is maybe open a magic type of museum or art gallery yeah. Yeah, that's a good uh, idea. long term uh, so people can enjoy it yeah. and I've been traveling as you guys have seen in my videos I've traveled I've traveled to uh, uh, Orlando recently to old school magic players I went to a, a car tournament in Seattle and uh, Lacey Washington which is uh, south end of Seattle and now I'm here in Houston and I'll probably uh, I'm going to Newcom in Sweden. Yep. So I'll probably bring you know you know yes. a, a couple yes. that I can put on my back. Well, hopefully not backpack. <laughs> but the whole point is like there's these 
I like to, you know, I'm also going to Magic Fest in uh, in August. I don't yep. know if you can come. Wait, which one? one? It's in, uh, the Magic Fest is now the GP. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Las GP. Vegas. Oh, Las Vegas. Vegas. Oh, yeah, yeah. You gotta yeah. come. Yeah, you gotta come, man. It's gonna be a great old school event. Uh, so, I might bring some of these pieces. It's kind of like, these are meant to be shared with yeah, people. Yeah, I never imagined I would ever yeah. see this, right? I didn't even know you had this. Um, well, people, a lot of people... Uh, I knew people, that you had it yeah. one time, but then I, I knew that it was, I guess, sold or something, and then I didn't... Yeah. I mean, it's just like... Uh, the original collection was uh, the original CEO, Peter Ackerson. He had the... Uh, a large collection. Like the, I, I had the black. I had the black lotus. I had the yeah, I know you had Mox the Jet Emerald, Time Walk, and the Sapphire. And at the time, my business, I was like, you know, uh, you know, I was more of a broker. I wanted to sell things and keep some stuff. Yeah. And I didn't really know what I wanted to do. And I think people change. And then I start realizing, and this seems very obvious now, that once you sell a piece of art, you'll never, ever, gonna ever get it back. Yep. Yep. <laughs> now. You're gonna be like, well, Dan, you did get it back, but at what, <laughs> yeah. but at what well, price? At what cost? What cost? Yeah. So a lot of you are like oh, saying, yeah. yeah, Dan paid, you know, ten times, you know, fit me or whatever more, or my clients, you know, we all paid more, right? You know, whatever, yeah, yeah. whatever stake it is, we paid way more. Like a Kel the World, for example, this piece um, was uh, offered. I was offered over two hundred thousand dollars for this piece, and I rejected it because I, I think this piece is absolutely a cool comic it's book. Very unique. Yeah. unique. Very yeah. early 90s. Early 90s comic book. book. You can even see, like, I love how, like, Kev Brockschmidt oh, has all the, yeah, yeah, the, the, the edges. The paint off, you know, I almost, yeah. If I was to frame it, I would basically float it in the frame yeah. rather than just having it, you know, glass with all the matte yeah. or whatever. And, and people also ask the question, Dan, why don't you frame these up? Well, framing them up and traveling with it is very bulky. Um, so, I what these... What, art, what you want to do with artwork is store them is these archival plastic sleeves and then I put them in the bank vault um, and basically you have to be like James Bond to take to get it out of the bank vault. So All right. that, 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 that's, yeah. that's, that's it right there. So I think my camera is going to overheat soon. But a lot of money. I mean, I mean, it's fantastic to see this because I, I mean, that is... Wow. Okay. Well, Tony, why don't you sell, you sell your business, you know? I wouldn't, yeah, if it's a million dollars, I mean, if I had it, I would pay for it. Because I think it has that value, like, yeah. going like... Well, who are people, who do you think are people now who are crazy enough to spend a million dollars? It's got to be Bitcoins, tech, I assume. Like, right. people who have come into money recently, who played Magic when, you know, underground... Not, not old money. Not old money. Not old money. Not old money. Well, well it could, I mean, it, you, I think you have Magic players aging into their careers, so I think the people that are looking into this, they probably have 10 plus years into their careers, you know, maybe they're starting to get, you know, they've, they've made investments. Yes, they, they investments. own businesses, or maybe attorneys, if they, if or they are a little bit older, they might be getting family money as, you know, grandparents and what have you. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right, uh, so, right, so, you know, there's, there's, there's a lot of things that someone that's sort of in that age Transfer range, of assets. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, and it's, you know, to go buy something, you know, there's there's a reason that... Uh, no, this know, is like a lot easier to buy it in a home. Like to sell right, it in a right, home. Manage it in a and home. then you can take, put it in your backpack and off you go and sell it. Um, yeah, I mean, I mean, you guys all bring up really great points. The, like, this is a five by seven uh, art piece and you can put this in your safe and you don't have to worry about it. Yeah, it's liquid. It's liquid. It's almost well, like a... Well, it's, it's liquid from a side that it's not liquid. In the yeah. sense that you can't go <laughs> out and hit like, like TD Ameritrade and say, yeah, oh, yeah. I'm going to sell my stock shares of Apple. Yeah. You can't do that. This is a very niche, let me warn everybody, a super, super niche, niche market. You know how Tony barks and bitches about the fact that, <laughs> that, that he has customers that are very, you know, the customers that come in. This They're market not is, is this, yeah. this customer base is even harder to find Correct. because you're talking like yeah. like we, you're talking about the multi millionaire status who can afford yeah. magic cards like this. All well, and I think or, you know, or, or, or maybe even billionaire, yeah, right? right? To be uniquely yeah. positioned, right? Because with a beat, with a beat, you beat, know, yeah. you sold something to an anonymous buyer. Right, right. I don't know who that is, sure. so I wouldn't know. You wouldn't know how to, how to buy it. Yeah. Well, I don't know how do you do it? Yeah, exactly. exactly. You exactly. have your connections that you right. get, you know, over time that you've got over time. Okay, so I'm going to yeah. pause the video and then I'm, I want to shoot another video. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, well, well, that's all we got for the art. Yeah. <laughs> that's, um, I mean, I love